Hello, everyone. This is Threatmark team. We're broadcasting right from the Threatmark headquarters uh, in the heart of uh, Europe. And today's webinar, we will have a look on uh, how artificial intelligence powered authentication improves security and reduces friction. So myself, uh, Ota Cermak, I'm head of sales and uh, the most important person on today's webinar is our pre-sales engineer, our expert, Lukas Jakubicek who will be providing more details on the use cases and, and the things that we are uh, helping customers with. And uh, let's just check today's agenda. So we're gonna start with uh, some information about how to fight uh, some sophisticated cyber threats and uh, actually fraud. Uh, we will also have a look on how to improve the user's experience with banking apps, which is quite important topic, which is because this is something that uh, banking clients, banking customers are really interested in, not to be annoyed by any uh, friction <laughs> in the process. And also we will uh, demonstrate to you how you can become compliant with the regulations, especially the, the PSD2, which is the actual compliance that or regulation that uh, resonates uh, in all across the banking industry. Also, we will show you how we actually saved money to one of our clients that would be otherwise spent on the costly SMS services that served as a second factor authentication. And also, we will have a look on how to reduce the number of false positives. So this is today's agenda. Uh, I'm quite enthusiastic about hearing Lukas <laughs> talking about this. And just, you know, from my position, I would like to uh, introduce our company for those that are not familiar with Threatmark or haven't come across uh, before. So this company was founded in 2015 by former ethical hackers. Uh, those two guys, Michal and Christoph, uh, used to work for uh, another company and they basically, their role was to destroy the existing solutions on the market and help banks to discover their uh, their security problems, issues, and uh, and discover the problems that they currently have, and which is something that they were very successful with. And while discovering the vulnerabilities and problems with the current bank security products, they decided to start a company to improve the bank security and to improve the situation. And that's how Threatmark started back in 2015. We're located in Czech Republic, but are active. We are actively working on four continents, and actually that means that we have customers all over the world. Also, uh, speaking of the numbers uh, that worth to mention is that we have more than 20 million clients protected. So that means that we are basically covering more than 20 million banking online banking users, and the company consists of. Uh, 50 and more experts on the banking fraud and cybersecurity. Also, what's actually in our DNA is that we are a high-tech uh, security company and we strongly focus on the behavioral biometrics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. What's special about you know being in this region, we are most deployed front prevention for Czech and Slovak Republic. And usually, which is great, and I hope that uh, Lukas will also mention later on some cases uh, where we can maybe demonstrate how we won over the bigger competitors uh, and how we were chosen and preferred over uh, the known brands that are on the market uh, in this industry by actually our customers, which are large international banking groups. And uh, what else? Uh, some of you guys joined this webinar to, to see and to learn uh, how we are doing with the Gartner, which is the one of the you know latest news, and uh, basically that's uh, the most important thing I wanted to mention in my part is that we were recently listed as a representative vendor for the online fraud detection area, and the latest Gartner's market guide for the year 2020. Also, I hope we're going to share more details later on, and uh, just to explain uh, or just to show you some customers we are working with. We have the whole Erste group and a lot of more banks, uh, as I mentioned previously, all over the world. So basically what's quite interesting, we had nice session this week with the fraud specialist and security people from one of the listed banks. And they were quite happy about sharing the knowledge and sharing the experience uh, about the latest frauds and uh, the latest trends in the cyber security and, uh, and the anti-fraud and authentication technology. 
So we also have some some awards and these things, but I think now it's time to give awards uh, to Lukash to start uh, with the interesting part, actually, <laughs> not the introduction, but actually speaking about the use cases and how we help our customers, how we help them, and how we are, let's say, uh, planning to to help uh, in in the area of uh, behavioral biometrics and uh, and security. So I will give uh, my word or the word here on the webinar to Lukash, and he will continue with his part. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for the uh, introduction. Before we start, just one organization stuff uh, I need to handle first. There is a, a screen that I'm right now sharing with you guys, and basically there is a uh, question and answer block, uh, some, some button that you can use to uh, raise a question during the whole webinar. And well, I have uh, my, my uh, whole team uh, connected as well with me. So you can ask your questions in Czech, Russian, Spanish, English, Italian, and Hungarian language. So w whatever suits you better, uh, you, you, can, you can use this uh, opportunity. And your questions will be answered at the end uh, of this webinar. So please uh, bear with me and type down your questions or, or put it directly into the into this bar that I'm showing you. Okay, so uh, let's jump into my presentation. So what I'm about to uh, show you or explain to you is that, um, well, the specific attack vector and how it might look like. So today's cyber attacks are very sophisticated. What starts, for example, as a web injection in your desktop browser might continue to your mobile phone where malware does it trick. So, so, so what you see right here um, is this. You will, you will open your banking and there will be a new input waiting for uh, your phone number to be put. This is the, this is the, uh, web, in, uh, this is the uh, web injection part. And uh, th this part is, uh, of course, web injected by malware. And that means that uh, some malware will inject this specific element into the front end of the legitimate application. So it will, it will look uh, totally legitimate. Everything will seem OK. Uh, and then as a second step, you will, you will fill your phone number. And after that, you will receive the SMS, uh, obviously, from the, from the fraudster asking you to download some, some application. Of course, the application will be malicious. So it will uh, look something like like this. It will it will potentially it might look like it's sent from a few, from your bank, but in reality, it's sent from the attacker's phone. And if you run the app, basically, if you download it, if you install it, uh, you will get infected. And application can use well, different kinds of vulnerabilities, such as Trendhawk, for instance, to resend your SMS and trick, uh, trick you with an overlay layer. That means that there is a new layer covering legitimate application with, for example, a layer intercepting your credentials. So that, that, that might be one of, one of the cases. And well, then Fraudster has everything he needs that, that means that your credentials are stolen and well possibly uh, he or she can steal your authentication SMS and basically uh, raise an overlay or draw overlay layer above the legitimate application so these these two things uh, can lead to to your money get, got stolen and this shows how important it is to see the fraud in a bigger picture, uh, to, to be able uh, to detect it uh, across the various channels. Well, let, let me let me be more specific uh, here. I'm right now, sharing the pretty famous concept. Uh, it is called five layers of fraud prevention, and it, it was introduced by Gartner a couple of years ago. And this concept suggests priorities for uh, solving malware threats within this um, overall framework that you can see on the on the slide. And you see that this framework starts with the analysis of the users and endpoints from from the security uh, from the security point of view. Then it goes to the analysis of the navigation behavior to the third layer dedicated to the behavior analysis by channel, uh, divided by channel. So it's, it's uh, augmented with a connected analysis that uh, is represented by analysis of cross-channel behavior and analysis of entities. So it, 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 it might 
seems uh, more sophisticated or well, let's say complex, but uh, but in reality, it's very it's very logical approach uh, how to deal with cyber threats. And what uh, what we did in Threatmark, we've uh, let's say reacted with our layered security approach, which is perfectly aligned with the five layers of fraud prevention by Gartner, and we were inspired by it, but we took a slightly different angle. So it all uh, starts with the first layer, the layer one, uh, analyzing all information related to the access. So even before the user put credentials, we already started with our analytical part. So we check uh, anonymization activities, we check browser, we check, well, operation system for malware, we check if the user came from the phishing URL and, and more. Uh, and then uh, the, the second uh, layer, let me show you, uh, is analyzing the data after the user is already, let's say, authenticated. So he puts the credentials in and now he's operating within the, the, the banking application. So we uh, observe of on on the well data which which we can obtain from the ip from which we can derive from the ip so we check the time also uh, we check the time of login we we check for location and other other things uh, useful third layer is mostly about proofing the user's identity and by that i mean that we are using well no, different means one of which is called behavior biometrics for, for that for the verification of the identity of our users so uh, the the way how uh, they are navigating with their mouses and the way how they are typing on their keyboards are pretty unique and we, we can based on this well subtle movements we we can we can we can prove their identities so this is a very important layer for us there is uh, also the layer four dedicated to the transaction part so uh, well let's say we do um, all these analysis uh, you might think of we we checked for uh, the amount of money being sent we are analyzing uh, the the pay and the payer from different perspectives so we, we do all these things but uh, what is what is really important here is this the fifth layer this uh, let's say analytical brain behind the whole operation this is basically this is threat mark we are analyzing data from all these layers constantly using machine learning algorithms we, we analyze them and will evaluate uh, the risk score uh, which is uh, which i will talk about later in in a different let's say uh, in a different representation we are connecting dots creating trusted digital uh, identity uh, of, of user so we, we are connecting these dots together we are using different let's say data streams for that uh, which are uh, then define, defining your your uh, identity which is impossible to mimic or or anyhow uh, fake this is the uh, actual actual screenshot from one of one one part of our solution, and what, why I'm showing you these slides. I, I wanted to explain how crucial it is to have the full context. So you, you want to know what is happening on all online channels. So across all, all online channels, not only on desktop or only on mobile channel and so on. So you want to combine this information within one comprehensive orchestration platform. And well, you, you need to have a deep understanding about the user's environment. Uh, know the user and based on this, do some decision-making, some, some further decision-making. Uh, so this is just a, well, uh, sneak peek into our admin console called AFS panel. It shows the timeline of all events that happened and all necessary context and some other useful charts giving you detailed info, uh, information about, about, the, about the current situation. So now you can see uh, that there is a timeline showing you that, that uh, some, 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 uh, someone uh, will access the system this morning, uh, try to log in multiple times and then uh, it resulted in transaction. So all this information you can see here is related to this very transaction. You can, you can see which specific detection we've triggered. You can see why we've triggered that. We, there are some clues why we think that there are two these detections 
uh, well necessary to be triggered with, with these tr transactions. You can see different uh, perspectives that we are f from from which we are analyzing uh, analyzing these events. Also, you can see some, for instance, frequency of capturing this type of detection. So you can get uh, well context over some time. So you can see evolution of of, of these uh, of these information. And that is exactly uh, what uh, Threatmark uh, does, uh, giving you a pretty pretty good context. So let let's let's have the first use case that I wanted uh, to 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 discuss in this webinar: reduction of false positives. And usually, traditional fraud systems or solutions are analyzing exclusively payments. So they, they focus on things like amount of money being sent, who is paying, to whom, in, in what specific time. But everyone from time to time makes some anomalous payments, at least uh, from, from this, uh, let's say, limited point of view. Imagine how much of, uh, well, how, how, how many of false uh, positives this might bring when the bank has millions of online customers. So the situation might be uh, like this. This is very, very uh, well, uh, high level breakdown, traditional anti-fraud so solution without context when you, when you buy something expensive or you will show any uh, anomalous behavior. Uh, it will generate false positive, but with uh, having a full understanding of what's happening, I mean, from the perspective of uh, user's identity, uh, threat level, and also, let's say, uh, also from the payments point of view, uh, the payment might be, might pass without, without well, generating the false positive. So imagine how, how, how many of these false positives can be saved for, for a pretty large uh, banks with a, with a million of online customers and, well, billions of, uh, of online transactions and then, well what this will result I mean uh, not having this contextual info will will result in the well their their fraud analyst will be overwhelmed uh, with these false positives dealing with with the manual investigation of every each false positive there is and this is not only let's say not effective uh, but it's also very expensive and also not very secure because sometimes uh, these guys these fraud analysts or investigators will have to contact uh, using phone uh, the end customer and this is definitely not not uh, recommended so yeah, yeah. Basically, fraud analysts will uh, not put their focus where it should be uh, on the actual uh, fraudulent cases. Uh, it brings, of course, some some obvious benefits: uh, less manual reviews, uh, saved money, and less customers friction. Yeah, caused by well, these analysts will not call them directly. Let me maybe uh, put it in more uh, visual way. Uh, imagine that that you ha you have a fraud detection system capable to analyze only payments, as I was explaining, and these systems are capable of only uh, limited view on events. So they they look only at payments as 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 it was said. That brings obvious problem number of false positives, as yeah, as I, as I mentioned. And whenever there is someone buying, for instance, some something more expensive than usual, some I don't know, for instance, maybe a new television. Uh, the system will look on the payment and it will say something like this. Uh, well, this is suspicious. Uh, let's uh, raise a flag. This is not not great, uh, not great attitude, I would say. And someone from from the bank's team will then have to deal with this false positive. It it, it is well, um, it, it will cost money and it will cost time. And this is this is not a good um, bank's internal fraud analyst are capable to dispatch only a limited number of these cases. So having listed only important ones uh, puts the focus where it should be. I mean, uh, where it should be uh, to the real uh, ones with the fraudulent potential, let's say. And that brings me uh, to the threat mark part, because well, we put a different uh, indicators into the decision process. We put multiple different areas to consider. And we, we see payment data as well. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true, that's same. But we put it into the context of other information about session, about device, about the behavior of the actual, uh, about the actual user who is sending money. So back to our situation with buying a new TV, uh, yes, the transaction is anomalous from, from the payment perspective, uh, definitely above average. That's not no question about it. But what 
changes is the level of the contextual info that Tretmark is able to collect. So now we now we see that there is no problem with the session. We already seen that the device be, we've already seen the device before, so we we know it from from the previous transactions. So that's also clear. And moreover, these behavior patterns and behavior biometrics are both valid for this user. So we can be really sure that we are dealing with the user we've known from the previous sessions. And well, detailed context means higher precision. So there is no need for raising a flag and causing a false positive. And one of our customer gave us a feedback that uh, with Threatmark solution in place, they, they were able to save more than, well, more than 99% <laughs> of false positives in comparison with their previous solution. So that's a pretty solid number and only uh, emphasizing the, that the way that we've, we've took is, is the right way. Maybe um, one uh, very great uh, use case for us is also saving for SMS. It's somehow interconnected with the, with the previous use case. And apart from the saving money for manual reviews on false positives, there is, there is a, well, a great benefit uh, with not saving money, uh, well, with a saving money uh, otherwise sent in vain uh, for SMS messages. So what, what I mean by that is that you can use Tretmark artificial intelligence powered authentication to adaptively step up or step down with an authentication challenge. Uh, so this, this attitude will not only save money otherwise spent on the SMS OTPs, but also improve the user experience. So the, the user is asked to retype the SMS only when there is a reason for it. And what I mean by that, and let me again put it uh, into a better visual way, uh, Tretmark, uh, based on the mentioned contextual info, will issue a risk score. And this risk score is indicator of how risky the particular action might be. So uh, let's focus on login. So let's have the user. We've we've uh, we've analyzing multiple uh, in, uh, well, information about the user, and let's focus what's happening during the login. So there is a user trying to connect to the online banking app, and when this user poses a low risk, he's granted without well putting friction on it. So so he's basically good to good to good to log in. We know him. We understand the whole context. Uh, he's free to log in basically. When our solution is not 100% sure that he is legitimate or we have some suspicion, we ask for confirmation for some authentication element. So it can be, uh, in this case, uh, it might be the SMS OTP message. And rest of, rest of the users, I mean, the high risk actions, high risk users might be blocked. And this, this part is uh, definitely optional. Uh, if, he, if the customer, well, doesn't want to use that, uh, as, I, as, I, as I said, it is definitely uh, optional part. They can go with the two first, let's say, options. And let, let's, let's, let's number stalk. Uh, majority of users will be granted. Uh, Small amount, small amount will be, let's say, escalated or let's say bothered with authentication element. And consequently, well, one of our customers calculated that they, they saved, and actually they're still saving every year, almost 1 million euros for these not sent SMS messages. Uh, this is also interconnected with, with another use case, improving user experience. If the bank doesn't use SMS for authentications of their uh, transactions, but they are using push notifications instead, for instance, there is a still good reason to use our solution because we, we can, we can uh, be in the background and seamlessly for the end user observe what is happening and request these push notifications only if needed, if necessary, if we are not sure. Uh, basically, in very similar way, uh, as I showed you uh, with these SMS messages on the previous side. So the situation is pretty similar. And we calculated that a customer can possibly save up to the 10 seconds when not dealing with these, with these put notifications, which, which, is a, which is a good number if, you're, if you are considering how, how many times you are logging to your banking accounts and how, how many users are being still bothered with this, with this authentication, uh, authentication element. Um, wrapping up, uh, these are the key, uh, key uh, points that I wanted 
to emphasize that our solution saved 1 million uh, euros and it was the use case when we were dealing with 1 million uh, online uh, users of one of our banking customers. We've uh, reduced the number of false positives by 99% and we've reduced the, well, let's say time spent on retyping these uh, additional authentication elements up to the 10 seconds per, per every each session. So these numbers are pretty, pretty good, I would say. Another uh, very great let's say use case and benefit of our solution, an area which we might help you or the help bank is the PSD2 compliance because well, Tretmark can also help to be compliant with this, with this regulation. PSD2 is for European countries only, but other countries are applying similar regulations as well. And there is a concept uh, called strong customer authentication, which is indicated in this uh, well, green uh, dashed rectangle that uh, says that you need to have at least two independent authentication factors on place to be compliant with the PSD2. And PSD2 further on is mentioning possession, something you have, for instance, token or SMS, uh, knowledge, something you know, which might be credentials. And uh, for us, most importantly, inherence, that is something you are. And According to the European Bank Authority, for that, well, the, the behavior biometrics can be used. How you move with your mouse and type on your keyboard might authenticate you. So for some users, bank might avoid sending them SMS messages completely. So with, with Threatmark, this authentication, well, is completely seamless for the end user. There is no need to install anything. It just, it just works. Another concept introduced by uh, PSD2 legislation is transaction monitoring that says that you have to analyze certain events and you can see them listed below. So all transactions have to be scored in real time. Any sign of authentication elements stolen must be reported and a financial malware has to be detected. And bank has to know current fraudulent scenarios and monitor amount of every each payment. And Threatmark can give you all this data and even more. Let's, let, let me now skip to the uh, screen scraping part, which is another benefit that Threatmark has because, well, we can, we can detect screen scrapers. Not only we can verify the human identities based on these subtle uh, differences uh, within their navigations, for that, we used a very, very similar module, but we, we, we check with this module, not, uh, we, we are not proofing identities with this module, but we are uh, checking for any signs of non-human-like behavior. Last part that uh, is introduced in this presentation is module called transaction risk analysis. And well, it analyzed more data than transaction monitoring and it is optional, but when you have the transaction risk analysis installed and you have all data listed, I mean, the, the, these information that's are, that, that are there, you can make exemptions from strong customer authentication. So with that, Threadmark also can help because well, all this information listed in these, in, in these bullet points there, we can help you with. So we can, we can see if there is any uh, abnormality within the spending behavior of the end, end clients. We can uh, observe and check for anomalies within the location of the payer and location of a pays account. We can also monitor fraudulent scenarios and we have a database uh, based on these. Uh, we can also monitor any kind of unusual information about the device or software. So if there is a, any uh, problematic issue related to the security uh, standpoint. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the device has been rooted or jailbroken. Maybe uh, maybe the version of the operation system is somehow outdated, or there is another problem. We can help. We Threatmark can help uh, also with that. Uh, and of course, and this was well said in the, in the transaction monitoring part, we, we can also monitor for signs of malware infection uh, for, for, for online channels. So that, that's related to the, to, the, to the PSD2. So wrapping up what, what the Threatmark does, we are trying to 
answer these, let's say, fundamental questions. First, is this really your device that you are interacting with, with the banking application? Do we know it from the previous session? Is it a secure environment? So do you use, I don't know, any uh, anonymization activities like Tor browser, or uh, do you use the VPN anonymization program, or do you have uh, disabled the JavaScript, for instance? Is it really you? And by you, I mean these things that I've mentioned before. So how you navigate with your mouse, how you type on your keyboards, how you uh, navigate throughout the application. So if you are, for instance, first, before you execute payment, you will you, you first check your history and then you will check some, some other navigation tabs and then you execute payments. So all these things we, we analyzed uh, and based on, on these uh, information, we can say, okay, so this is really you or this is not you or we are really not 100% sure and we need some, some confirmation that this, this is you. And only in these cases, as I've mentioned on the previous slides, only in these cases, we are issuing this authentication challenge. Last question is that your typical payment that, that you are making. And by that, I mean that, uh, well, these traditional, uh, traditional analysis that I've mentioned before. So is there really the account number typical uh, for you to, to send money to? Is the amount typical for you? And above these uh, numbers, we are doing our, uh, let's say, uh, analytical part. So what, what might seem uh, as a fraudulent uh, in the end with the proper level of context might be perfectly legitimate uh, transaction. And bank based on this information can then decide uh, proceed with the payment because there is a low risk posing for us. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, guys, so uh, that, was, that was all from my part. Right now, I, uh, I want to thank you for your attention. And I believe now it's time for your question, if there is any.